Hi everyone, today I'll be looking at the solo from the song Bark the Moon by Ozzy Osbourne. The solo begins in the key of D minor, the relative minor of F major. Both these keys share a key signature of one flat. By its conclusion, however, the solo has modulated to the key of A minor, the relative minor of C major. These keys have no accidentals in their key signature. The solo begins 2 minutes 2 seconds into the tune and is played over the following chord progression. This part of the progression consists of the tonic, subtonic, submediant, subdominant and dominant or chords 1, 7, 6, 4 and 5 in D minor. These chords are used to affect the modulation to A minor. I will discuss the modulatory process later in the video. Although all of the solo's melodic content is drawn from the D natural minor and D minor pentatonic scales, the song's guitarist, Jake E. Lee, creates interest through his note choices and skillful blending of elements from rock, jazz, blues and heavy metal guitar styles. Stylistically, the solo can be divided into two sections. The first section, which ends here, is based predominantly on rock, jazz and blues elements although techniques and ideas from the heavy metal genre are also present, while the second section here relies on the long scale passages characteristic of many heavy metal guitar solos. Looking at the first section of the solo, throughout the section Lee generally chooses to extend the chords of the underlying progression by featuring notes which are not part of the progression's basic triads. This technique, common in jazz and fusion styles, allows the soloist the freedom to create extended chord sounds of his or her choosing. In this section, Lee appears to favour 7th and ninth sounds, examples of which can be found here, where Lee creates a D minor 7th sound by playing C over the D minor harmony. Here he creates a C add ninth sound by playing D over the C major chord. Here he creates a G minor ninth sound by playing A over the G minor chord. And here he creates a C dominant seventh sound by playing B flat over the C major chord. In this bar, Lee creates a B flat major ninth sound by playing both A and C over the B flat major chord. The A and C notes can be heard as the root and third of an A minor arpeggio. Playing different arpeggios over chords is another common means of extending basic triads. Although Lee favours the 7th and ninth sounds in these bars, he also uses other extensions, such as here, where he creates a C major 6th sound by playing A over the C major chord, and here, where he creates a D minor 11th sound by playing the note G over the D minor chord. The 11th sound is also found here, where Lee plays D over the A5 chord. As mentioned previously, Lee's melodic choices are drawn from a number of guitar styles. Along with using the common jazz and fusion technique discussed earlier, Lee also uses other stylistic elements. For example, he introduces blues elements by incorporating passages and ideas based on common blues licks. Here, the use of this repeating lick, which is based around notes of the first position D minor pentatonic scale, can be found in many blues, rock and heavy metal tunes. This blues lick, which is also based on the first position D minor pentatonic scale, is again common to many genres. In this example, notice that Lee's half step bend up to C creates a D minor seventh sound, which extends this triad. Finally, this group of notes is again drawn from the first position D minor pentatonic scale and uses part of the same repeating lick, which Lee later uses here. Elements which Lee draws from the heavy metal genre include the use of pinch harmonics found in the following bars, and from heavy metal's neoclassical subgenre, Lee includes arpeggio based licks in bars 8 and 9, and pedal point licks, which he includes here and here. According to the Associated Board of the Royal Schools of Music, a pedal point or pedal is a note which is sustained throughout changing harmonies. It need not belong to each of the chords which it accompanies and is often dissonant with them. In bars 4 and 5, the A pedal is begun over C major harmony and is then maintained over the B flat chord. 
Notice that the A, which briefly creates a sixth sound over the C major chord, sounds the seventh of B flat major and alternates with C, the ninth, and D, the third of this chord. In this example also, the D pedal is sustained through the change of harmony from D minor to C major. The D pedal, when played over the D minor chord, alternates with F, the third of D minor, and G, the eleventh, while over the C chord, the D creates an add ninth sound. Notice that Lee introduces each of these stylistic elements at different points of his solo. The blues bass licks are found in three separate areas. The pedal point licks also are used at different times. The arpeggio licks are used only once, and the notes extending the triads are used alongside runs drawn from the D natural minor scale and chord notes from the underlying progression. In this way, Lee adds variety and interest to these bars. Beginning here, the second section of the solo uses ascending scale runs drawn from the D natural minor scale. Each run uses the same 16th note melodic pattern played sequentially across the neck. This run begins on B flat, the same note as the root note of the underlying B flat major chord, and ends on the chord's 6th degree G. This run begins a tone higher on C, the same note as the root note of the underlying C major chord, and ends on the chord's 6th degree A. The final ascending run continues the pattern, beginning a tone higher on D. This final run is extended across two bars and reaches this E at the end of bar 22. In the following bar, the pattern changes and Lee now plays a run based on shorter descending and ascending scale passages. Rhythmically, this run predominantly uses 16th note triplets and climbs the B and high E strings to end here on the note A. As mentioned previously, these chords are used to affect the modulation to A minor. Because the G, C and A5 chords are common to both keys of D minor and A minor, they can each be considered pivot chords. If we relate them to the key of D minor, they can be heard as the major subdominant, taken from the harmonized ascending melodic minor scale, subtonic and dominant chords. And if we relate them to A minor, they can be heard as the subtonic, median and tonic chords. Melodically in these bars, Lee continues to use the D natural minor scale and is therefore perhaps still thinking in terms of the key of D minor until the A5 chord when the key of A minor begins. Using notes from the key of D minor in A minor sections, however, is not unique to these bars, as Lee also uses this idea in the tune's main riff. Initially used 12 seconds into the tune, he incorporates an A Phrygian lick amongst the riff's otherwise A minor tonality. This concludes the analysis of the Bach at the Moon solo. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.